the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, from coast to coast, in every state in the Union, present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... I wonder what became of Sally. And Groucho. Oh, that's me. Huh? Oh. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. A lot of money, huh? Eh? It certainly is. Don't even say the word, the secret word. The duck will fly down and pay him 100 bucks. The word tonight is, uh, house. Okay, scram. <laughs> well, Groucho, we have some young single people for you. They were chosen by our studio audience just before we went on the air. Miss Ula Anderson and Mr. Charles O'Brien Osborne, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Ula Anderson and Charles O'Brien Osborne. And you're both single? That's right. Yes. Mm. You know each other? No. no. I've never seen her before. Well, don't be so happy about it. <laughs> well, let's get acquainted, shall we? I'd like to very much. Ula, is that right? Is that how you pronounce it? No, my name is Ula. Ula, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ula. French have a word for it. Ooh la la. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know. You're a Svenska? Yeah, I'm Swedish. Yeah. Do you what? speak Swedish? No, but I uh, wish I did. Huh? <laughs> After looking at you, I wish I could speak English. Huh? <laughs> what part of uh, Sweden are you from? Minneapolis? No, I'm from Enschelsvik. What was that? Enschelsvik. Could you, could you spell that for the audience? Well, I can't spell it in English, but I can spell it in Swedish because you don't have those letters. <laughs> well, spell it in Swedish, huh? E-R-N-S-K-E-L-D-S-V-I-K-O. Now spell it backwards. Uh, I can't. Can? How long have you been from Sweden? One and a half year. Oh, well, you speak very good English. Did you speak English in Sweden? Well, I took it up at school. Oh, see. How old are you, Ula? Eighteen. Well, you're a very pretty Svenska, huh? <laughs> Certainly the best advertisement for smorgasbord I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could pick her instead of the herring on that smorgasbord? <laughs> what made you decide to come to America? Was it... Well, it was lots of American pictures I saw, and it was real handsome boys in those pictures. And now that you've been here, why, would you say these movies were accurate in depicting American men? Well, I think they're a little bit too overdone, though. <laughs> Don't you like them overdone? What do you want, them rare? <laughs> what did you really expect over here, Ula? 60 million Gregory Pecks? Um, you realize what that is? 60 million Pecks is 15 million bushels. <laughs> yeah, that would be too much, though. Charles O'Brien Osborne, eh? That's a pretty imposing name. Which one of these three names shall I call you? I'd rather you call me Chad, sir. Chad? That's right, sir. How old are you, Chad? I'm 20. Chad, let's see if you're a gay, romantic, handsome, typical American male. What sort of work do you do? I work at a service station. <laughs> That's good, honest work. Is this your ambition, to someday own your own service station and, and service to Soto's in Plymouth? Uh, no, uh, Groucho, my ambition is to... Uh, further my ability to be a stuntman. A stuntman? Right. At a service station? What do you do, <laughs> hang upside down from a gas pump? <laughs> what kind of a stuntman are you? I'm a narrow trapeze artist. In the circus? No, uh, that comes under the uh, heading of uh, airplanes. You, I have uh, my trapeze bar that I hook underneath the airplane and then go up a couple thousand feet and hang by my heels and my Knees. Well, that's not so exciting, is that? <laughs> I did that the last time I flew east. It's called tourist third class. <laughs> what else did you do? Did you just hang there like a bat until the plane runs out of gas? No, after you get through your, uh, your trapeze act, uh, the crowd, uh, they, they don't think you have a shoot on because you're up so high they can't see it and uh, put the shoe over pretty big, you're hanging there by your heels, and all of a sudden you just fall off. And, uh, That's a good joke on them, shakes isn't it? The people <laughs> up, yeah. It really shakes the people up, and you fall 
couple of thousand feet and then you open your chute. Uh -huh. and then you're all relieved then. Yeah. Well, what, do you think, think, what do you think of Ula? Well, I think she's a very nice, pretty young lady. Uh, she has a very cute accent. Yes, she is. You ought to know, you've been looking at it ever since you've been up there. <laughs> I think you should two, uh, two should get to know each other better. Ula, would you like to go flying with Chad? No, I don't like to ride in airplanes. Well, you wouldn't be riding in a plane. You'd be swinging upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a charming couple, and now you're going to play your bet your life. And Ula, this is one part of America you'll enjoy, because you have a chance to make a lot of money here. We start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll, and you can quit any time you like. Now, let's see how much money you can make. You selected music. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Don't kiss her. Just talk it over. $50? Fifty. All right, let's see if you can identify this well-known Geishman tune. Play, Jack. It's a very well-known song. It's Embraceable You by George oh. and Ira Gershwin. Well, you lost half your bankroll. You'll still have $50. All right, now, don't get discouraged. What do you want to try this time? It's up to you. I'm going to let you decide. I messed up on the first one. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's try 60. 60? This tune has been a favorite for years. What is it? Sleepy Time Gale. Sleepy Time Gale is right. Your bankroll is growing again. You now have one hundred ten dollars. Now, what do you want to try? Hmm? Well, you go ahead. <laughs> okay, let's say seventy. Seventy. Old Devil Moon and How Are Things and Glockamora are two hit songs from what successful musical comedy? Played on Broadway for two years. You can talk it over, you know. Well, I'm I'm sorry. It's Finian's Rainbow. Well, you now have $55. $55, and here's your last chance. I had to beat the other couples. Now, what do you want to try? Go for broke. Go for broke? Is that all right with you, Ula? Yeah. That's $100? Let's go for 80 80 Okay. <laughs> Al Jolson and Vincent Roos wrote this longtime favorite. What is the name of it? Play, Jack. <laughs> You stunt man. If you don't know, take a stab. Nothing? Nothing. Well, it's, they play it every time you go to Catalina. It's Avalon. And you wind up with $27.50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is National Safety Month. Can you see, steer, stop safely? If not, check your car, check accidents. With the busy driving season here, now is the time to check your car. Be safe by driving a safe car. That makes a lot of sense, George. Last year, over a million people were killed and injured in needless automobile accidents. It's a dreadful waste of life. Yes, and the tragic thing is, Groucho, that a great many of those accidents would have been avoided if the car owners had taken just a little time to have their cars checked. And to make sure your car gets a complete safety checkup, there's no better place to go than a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. His factory trained mechanics will go over every part of your car that can affect your safety. To make sure they are all in perfect working order. Wheels, brakes, headlights, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, taillights. Everything you need for safe driving. You know, it takes only a small amount of time and money to keep you and your family safe on the highways. Isn't it worth it? Remember, to be a safe driver, you must be able to see, steer, stop safely, check your car, check accidents. 
Stop in where you see the sign of better service, the friendly sign of your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. We uh, have a high school boy for you tonight, Groucho. He's Henry Aaron, and his partner is a very special guest. She's Mrs. Laura Asher. Well, I don't think I'm going to tell you any more about her. I'm going to bring her out here and see how long it takes you to recognize her. So, uh, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the sacred word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. <laughs> Mr. Henry Aaron and Mrs. Laura Asher, eh? Uh, Mrs. Asher, I gather there's something about you Fenneman thinks I should know. I've got a pretty good idea already, but I'll give our listeners a chance to guess. Henry, let's talk to you. You're the tallest. How old are you? Well, I was born in 1936. 36. Let's yes. see. That makes you, uh, pimp and foofsy, cock and foxy, <laughs> white and swansy. <laughs> Don't avoid the issue. How old are I'm you? I'm going on 18. You're going on what? 18. Oh. <laughs> Well, when you're 18, there's plenty going on. Do you go to school? Yes, I'm a senior B at Fairfax High School. Oh, a senior? Somebody out there from CCNY. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to you, Mrs. Ash. And Fanneman didn't fool me. I know who you are. Weren't you in the movies? Yes, yeah. about 20 years ago. Well, that's the time I was in it. <laughs> what are some of the pictures you were in? Oh, dear, I wonder if I can remember. Well, name 10. Well, <laughs> King of Jazz, yeah, I'm talking Paul about Weissman. old times, that's right. And um, Finders Keepers, Cat and the Canary, oh, dozens of others, I don't remember. Henry, did you ever see Mrs. Asher in pictures? Well, if she made pictures 20 years ago, I don't think I could have seen her. I'm only 18. <laughs> well, don't you watch television? <laughs> Well, you're just as lovely and charming as you were 20 years ago. Thank you. When the whole world knew you as Laura LaPlante. <laughs> Your husband's a big producer at Paramount, isn't he? Well, I think he'd be very insulted to have you call him big. He's just taken off 25 pounds. <laughs> He's quite a leading man now. But he is a producer at Paramount Studios. Is he tall, your husband? About six feet. Mm -hmm. Can he hit hard? Oh, <laughs> he's never tried it on me. No, I was referring to me. <laughs> what picture is your husband producing now? Well, his last production was Elephant Walk with uh, Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Dana Andrews. It was a picture that was made in Ceylon. They took a whole troop of players over to Ceylon, worked there about two months. The scenery is magnificent. I think scenery that most of us have never seen. Mm -hmm. I haven't even seen an elephant. <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth Taylor, does she ride on the top of the elephant? And uh, what do they call that? A howda, a hooda? I think what do it they is... call that? You're I don't know. Uh... <laughs> You're not much of a student, are you? <laughs> what is your chief interest in school, uh, Henry? Well, I'm interested in a lot of things at Fairfax High, I guess. I'm interested in athletics. I like to watch the sports and, I well. <laughs> that's, that's pretty tiring, isn't it? Well, sometimes it gets me down, but uh, the thing that I'm most interested in, I have been trying to help organize the debating team at our school for a couple of years. And nobody will talk? <laughs> the wrong people won't. Well, what would you like to be when you finish school, if you ever do? <laughs> Well, I'd like to go into politics, as a matter of fact. I... You want to be a statesman? I think that would be a better name for it, probably. Well, there's quite a difference between a politician and a statesman. Yes, there is. A politician gets elected and a statesman gets defeated. <laughs> I mean, you want, what do you want to be? Uh, well, uh, an alderman? Or? I, 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 I'm very interested in being in the Congress because I feel that there, there's a real opportunity to do things, and there are certainly things that could, can be done. Oh, come now. <laughs> Why, those boys are perfect. <laughs> well, I... You, you know they're only stuck with 200 million pounds of butter? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> that was one of their big schemes a couple of years ago. <laughs> they have others, too. They have wheat in a battleship off the coast of Seattle. <laughs> All I know is what I read the paper. 
gosh, he wins. <laughs> I wish I could continue this conversation, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $27.50, and the secret word is house. Now, you, you both know how to play this game, huh? We yes. play the game? I would like to say, if I may, Groucho, well, that if, if, we're, may, um, yeah. if we're lucky enough to win something, I'd like to have my share go to the Motion Picture Relief Fund. Well, that's, that's very nice of you. <laughs> Unfortunately, they, this won't influence the quiz, I think. But, uh, <laughs> however, it's, it's a commendable uh, objective, Laura, and uh, I'm proud of you. And I wish you weren't married. Now, let's see how much money you can <laughs> Let's see how much money you can make. You select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Talk it over, and one answer between you. And stall so I can light my stove. Good idea. Okay, we'd like to start with the $100 question. A $100 question? Yes. <laughs> Why, you're as mad as Freddie March is here. $100. Okay, what is the capital of Puerto Rico? Talk it over. Oh, I wish I was home. I don't. Go ahead. San Juan. San Juan is correct. Oh. <laughs> well, you're off to a fine start. Your bankroll is now $200. Now you have $200. Now what do you want to do? Well, the 90? Uh, yeah. Come on down the okay. line. Okay. Okay, 90. 90. What country is known as the Pearl of the Antilles? Antilles, I guess. How is your Antilles, by the way? <laughs> Well, it's A-N-T-I-L-L-E-S. As the pearl of the Antilles, we think it's Cuba. By Jove, it is Cuba. Oh, yes. oh. You now have $290. This is pearls before swine. And I'm the pig that... No, I know. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, what do you want? Do you want to try the 80 You can quit, question? you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to proceed. Oh, no, I have a good part. <laughs> We're not going to quit. <laughs> we'll try the $80 question. $80. 80. The Suez Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea with what other sea? Talk it over. The Mediterranean, I believe, is the Pacific. I'm depending on you, The dear. Pacific Ocean. Think. Caribbean. Audience? East Caribbean. It's the Red Sea. Oh. oh. I was thinking of the Panama Canal. <laughs> That's a shame. How often do you think of the Panama <laughs> Canal? Oh, well, right. you, uh, you, you lost it. half your bankroll. You still, still have $145. We'll try for the $70 question. All right, what is the name of the storm toss? Southernmost tip of South America. Tierra del Fuego. Oh, quick. I hope it was right. <laughs> well, I've got uh, Cape Horn here, but you, apparently you know more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and also the boys in the back here, <laughs> who can see these questions. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Yeah. And you wind up with a bank roll of $215. Big chest. Well, right. thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> George, do your duty. Tell me who's next. All right, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a fireman. His name is Cyril Bennett. And with him is a housewife, Mrs. Jacqueline uh, Reinerson. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Jacqueline uh, Reinerson, eh? And Mr. Mm -hmm. Sale Bennett. You're a fireman? That's right, sir. Just want to see if you're asbestos proof here. <laughs> you're a fireman, huh? That's right. How's the pinochle game going? <laughs> Jacqueline Reinerson, huh? That's you. You're a very attractive Jacqueline. May I call you Jackie Jacqueline? You may. Everyone does. Everyone does. Uh, where are you from, Jack? Oh, I was born in Paris, France. In Paris, France? Mm -hmm. My oh. mother was a war bride in the First World War. Is that so? Mm hmm. When was that? What year was this? 1921. You were born in Paris? That's right. Do you polywool? Oh, I do, but I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Have you tried getting oiled once in a while? <laughs> How'd you meet your husband? Uh, your husband? Uh, Would you say it was love at first sight? Well, that just depends on how you define love. Well, the definition for love is fairly simple. It's, it's an itching that you can't scratch. <laughs> Did you ever hear the seven-year itch? 
How would you define love, uh, Jack? Well, I feel that um, it's a combination of things, that, um, physical as well as the mental attraction. But um, I do think the most important thing is that uh, people feel the same about basic principles, things that involve integrity, honor, and uh, consideration, courtesy. And that's love, huh? I think so. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it is. I guess that's why so many people marry for money. Eh? <laughs> I'm just an old cynic, that's all. Sir, let's get down to some facts about your job as a fireman. For example, how many fires do you attend in a day? I don't go to any fires. <laughs> Not a very hot fireman, I might <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like to smash furniture? <laughs> Why don't you go to fires? Well, I'm at the fire department alarm board. That's the uh, communications center for the fire department. Well, when you get a call, how long does it take for a fire truck to respond? Do they get there the same day? <laughs> well, when a fireman receives an uh, alarm, he jumps out of bed, slides the pole, and is on the uh, truck within 10 seconds. And five seconds later, he's back upstairs trying to find his trousers. <laughs> how does the average citizen act when he reports a fire? Do they make any sense, or do they just babble? Uh, well, far too often, the um, uh, citizen will uh, call up and say, come quickly, my house is on fire. Uh, Wait! You said house, that's the secret word, so you win $50, then you win $50. Thank you, Roger. Well, tell us some more about what happens. They uh, call you up and say, my house is on fire? Yes, they'll call up and say, come quickly, my house is on fire. And then uh, sometimes they hang up without giving an address. <laughs> That's a good one on you, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> well, Jackie, let's get back to you. I've discovered after seven years on this seat here that every housewife has outside interests. Uh, what is yours? Well, for the past 18 months, I've been doing everything I can to help Lakewood become a city. Lakewood? You Lakewood. mean this local Lakewood out here? That's mm -hmm. a pretty big job. How many children do you have so far? Huh? <laughs> How do you explain this away? Well, about 18 months ago, there was a move to uh, annex Lakewood to Long Beach. And uh, many of us in the community felt that we were 60,000 young people, intelligent. There certainly should be enough leadership in our community so that we could have local self-government. So we decided to do it, and we did. It sounds like an unusual place, Lakewood. Like it is. Could you tell us a little more about it? We have uh, 35,000 children whose uh, average age is under six. You have 35,000 children and a total population of 60,000? That's right. And you say Long Beach wanted to annex your town? Mm -hmm. Well, you just keep having children at that rate, and I predict in four more years, Lakewood will not only annex Long Beach, it'll engulf the whole of Southern California. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, and I wish both of you the best of luck in the future. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,500, the high school student and Laura LaPlante are leading with $215. Let's see how much money you can make. You select a general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Right. You want to start with 10, 50, 80, 100. Make your choice. But one answer between you on everything. Seven. Seven. 70. In mathematics, what do you call the figure? Three decimal point, 1416. Three decimal point, 1416. Pie. That's right. What kind, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, pie is right. You now have $170 in your bankroll. $170. What do you want to try? 60. 60? What do you call a fatal spot in the desert? An oasis. Mm -hmm. That's true. An oasis. You now have $230. You can quit or proceed. Why? We'll go ahead. Fifty? Mm -hmm. What do you call the track left by a ship passing through the water? Wake. Wake. That's right. You now have $280. What do you want to try? You can quit or go ahead. 
40. 40. 40. 40. What do you call the complete outfit for a newborn infant? You Layette. ought to know that. Layette. Layette is absolutely correct. And you wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the Soda Plymouth dealers. <laughs> And that means that Mrs. Ryerson and the firemen with $340 or $20 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Oh, the big news, the big news this year's DeSoto, DeSoto with power flight shift. Just the turn of a key and you're ready to go. No clutch and no shifting automatic, you know. DeSoto has more, more power And beauty that shines like a star For the thrill of a ride That will fill you with pride Drive DeSoto Automatic Yes, drive a new DeSoto Automatic Equipped with Power Flight America's finest fully automatic transmission You'll find driving is easier And far less tiring because DeSoto's fully automatic power flight transmission was designed to carry out your sudden orders quickly, smoothly, quietly. So for a new driving thrill, drive a new DeSoto automatic with power flight. And if it's power you're looking for, get behind the wheel of a DeSoto Fire Dome. The mighty Fire Dome 170 horsepower V8 engine gives you all the power you can possibly use at the touch of a toe ready to perform the instant you call on it. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow and treat yourself to the beauty and luxury of a new DeSoto automatic. Available in two great series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the superb Power Master 6. Remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. And here comes the winning couple crowd show all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. All right, here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please know up in the audience, here it is. Only one denomination of United States currency has a picture of the White House on the back of it. For $2,500, which bill is it? Talk it over. You have 15 seconds. <laughs> All right, what, what's the answer you two have decided upon? The dollar bill. No, I'm sorry, it's the $20 no. bill. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be why $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but how much they win the quiz? Uh, $320 in That's the quiz. That's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Don't forget the stunning DeSoto Automatic and the High Style Plymouth. Both great products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see a DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and see the 1954 DeSoto Automatic. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And don't forget Groucho Marx on radio every Wednesday night. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. The careful driver always considers the careless driver.